وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. I have a really special unboxing today, and this is something that I've really enjoyed reading, and I think you're really going to benefit from. It is a early manuscript of the Quran scanned from uh, one of the uh, researchers. And this is what's called the Mus'haf al-Sharif. Mus'haf al-Sharif, Mansub al-Uthman ibn Affan. And this is uh, attributed to Uthman ibn Affan, the companions. And this is the Nuskha, this is the manuscript that is uh, well known as the Mashhad Husayni. And this is the original manuscript is in Cairo, Egypt. Um, it comes in a very nice box with two volumes, thick volumes. And in essence, what is it? It's the Quran. Yeah. It's not the Quran. He's saying he's a What Quran. is this thing? Oh, okay. What is this? We'll what is it? Let me see. Look, look at him. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> this is not the Quran. Look at this. This stuff is Quran. not the Quran. Okay. That's it's not a Quran. Okay. You just said it's not show the Quran. Me, me that. Essentially, that's exactly what it is. It is the Quran and a very early manuscript as attributed to Uthman ibn Affan, um, scanned by Dr. Tayyar, uh, one of the researchers. And you can see what it is, it's actually page by page scanning the Mus'haf, the Qur'an. It's not a book about the ulum of the Qur'an, the sciences of the Qur'an, or about uh, the manuscript and their history. There is an introduction that discusses these things, but that's not what it is. In essence, it is a scan of one of the earliest manuscripts of the Qur'an, which is attributed to Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. What do I mean that it's attributed to Uthman ibn Affan? And I'll explain this more in detail. But we are not saying that this is the personal copy that Uthman Radian was reading when he became Shaheed and his blood was built on. Obviously not. Um, but when we say Mus'haf Uthman, when we say the Mus'haf of Uthman, we don't mean his personal copy that his blood was built on when he was reading the Quran and he was attacked. We mean a standardization of the Quran that was done by Uthman. And these standards were then copied. He didn't write them with his own hand. Zayd ibn Thabit and other scribes, they wrote them out and they sent them out to the Muslim world. How many were there? Some said five, some said six, up to seven and so on. But these were no doubt sent out to the different Muslim lands to show one standard Quran. And every recitation, every Qur'at has to be based on the Mus'haf Uthman, on that standard text written in what's called the Rasam Uthmani, in the Uthmani script as ordered by Uthman ibn Affan. Now, these manuscripts were not his personal manuscript. These were manuscripts that were written and sent out. And we'll talk about where they were sent and so on. And then copies of those manuscripts were made. And all of those are considered Mus'haf Uthman because they're written in accordance to the Rasam of Uthman, radiallahu anhu. It does not mean that this is his personal copy. Why do we call those Mus'haf Uthman? Because those are the standards that all of the recitations go back to. And this is very important. And that's why I think this work is very, very important. Because we hear these strange allegations today. Oh, there's 20 Quran, there's 36 Quran, there's 80 Quran. And they, they keep making up new numbers. Christian apologists, Islamophobes, they make up these wild, crazy allegations. And they say there's so many different Musahif in this. And when we tell them that that's not what a Mus'haf is, that those are Qur'at. Those are styles of recitation, all based on the Sab'a Haruf, those seven modes of recitation that Allah revealed to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And they all go back to one Qur'an. There is only one Qur'an. It begins with Al-Fatiha, it ends with Al-Nas, it has 114 chapters, 30 juz, that's it. That is one Qur'an. Now, why do Christians have such a, uh, a hard time? Because they realize that they don't have such a standard Bible. Today, if you look at the Greek Orthodox Bible or the Catholic Bible or the standard King James that we see or the Book of Mormon or the uh, New World Translation, for example, Jehovah Witness one, you will find clear differences. Verses are missing. For example, in the New World Translation, they've taken out verses. 
there are additional chapters. For example, Tobith in the Catholic Bible, um, in the Greek Orthodox, in the Ethiopian uh, Bible, you will find different chapters, different numbers, different verses. That problem we don't have, alhamdulillah. And they become upset about this. And they don't have their early manuscripts. And they know this. Uh, and again, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm going to present here the research of one of the best known biblical scholars in the world. And this is Dr. Bart Ehrman. And Dr. Bart Ehrman, who used to be a Christian, but is an atheist, is agnostic. So he is fair and balanced in his judgment. He doesn't have a axe to grind towards Islam or towards Christianity. And he is no doubt a well-respected biblical scholar. So let's see what he has to say. How many of the earliest scriptures do we have? We do not have the originals of the New Testament, period. Exactly. <laughs> In fact, if we look at the early manuscripts, when did we get most of the biblical manuscripts of the New Testament? Let's hear Dr. Bart Ehrman. How many manuscripts of the New Testament do we have from the first Christian century? None. From the decades after the books were written, how many do we have? The years afterwards, the decade, none. Zero. How many do we have from the early second century? Say, manuscripts that clearly date up to around the year 150. We have one scrap. This is it. This may look big because it's a big screen. This is the actual size. It's the size of a credit card. It's written on both front and back. It's from John chapter 18. It has several verses on it. You can see this little scrap has parts of seven lines on it. It's a very important manuscript because it's the earliest one we have. It's the early second century. And it is the only manuscript we have from the early second century. That's it. How many complete manuscripts do we have from the second and third centuries? We're not just talking about decades now after these things were originally written and copied and mistakes made and mistakes replicated and then more mistakes made and more replicated. We're not talking about years or decades. We're talking about centuries. How many complete manuscripts do we have from the second and third centuries? None. Zero. Well, if we have 5,500 manuscripts, where are they from? When are they from? Well. 94% of our surviving manuscripts come from the 9th century and later. 94% come from the 9th century, which is great if you want to know what the Bible looked like when Christians were reading it in the year 890. But if you want to know how they were reading it in the year 70, you've got a problem because you don't have manuscripts from that period. Now you see, Knowing this, Christian apologists, these Islamophobes, they get upset, they burn with jealousy. So then they make wild accusations. There's so many Qur'ans and we tell them, no, no, there's only one Qur'an. They say, oh, what about Warsh and Hafs? Well, those aren't two different Qur'ans. They're two different styles of recitation. Warsh begins with Al-Fatiha, so does Hafs. They recite all the way to Nas, right? But if one says Malik Yawmiddin or Malik Yawmiddin or Alayhim or Alayhum, that's not a different Qur'an. That's just a different method of recitation. So when we tell them it goes back to one Mus'haf, one Qur'an, we mean that standardization made by Uthman ibn Affan and all the copies that were made of it in the Rasam Uthmani, in the style of writing of Uthman radiallahu anhu as he started. We don't mean it's his personal copy that his blood was spilt on when he was attacked. No, that's uh, in, either in a museum or not with us. or is it the one that he wrote with his own hands? No. He ordered this compilation. Zayd ibn Thabit and the Sahaba and the companions came to a consensus on one Quran and then copies were made and they were sent out. And we'll talk about this inshallah as the uh, researcher has mentioned in the introduction of the book. And these copies were sent to the different parts of the Muslim world. And then copies of those copies were made to be standards. And these are all considered the Musahif of Uthman the standardization of Uthman, because they were all there to show one standard throughout the Muslim world. Until today, we recite according to that standard. We may print 
Qur'ans today with different colors to, to show Qur'at or add the Fatha, Dhamma, Kasra, Zair, Zabar, Pesh, Sukun, Jazam, these dialects for non-Arabs and even Arabs to recite it properly, but they all have to go back to that one standardization. I don't mean one book, I mean one standardization, then copies of that were made upon the order of Uthman Radiya, not by his own hand, and copies of those copies were made and sent out and kept in the Muslim lands. And we have many manuscripts today that are attributed to be from those copies. This is one of them. And that's why it says Musaf al sharif the Musaf, the honored Musaf, as attributed to who? Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu. Now, before I get into that, I want to explain something that when we talk about the criticism of the Bible, somebody might say, oh, you're using Dr. Bart Ehrman, but what about the Quran? I'm going to quote the same Dr. Bart Ehrman and his idea of what the Quran, whether it's been preserved or not. Here you go. Fair and balanced. Yes, throughout your work, like for 40 years, we noticed that your main problem about uh, trusting the Bible and the authenticity of the Bible is the technique of transmission which is um, we don't have the originals we don't know who wrote the bible uh, or who are the uh, scribes who copied the manuscripts there is a parallel uh, transmission technique uh, b b in transmitting the uh, holy verses or the holy scriptures which is uh, followed by the muslims like by tr trans transmitting the, the Quran and the traditions of their prophet have you ever considered looking at their techniques uh, in transmission because they do claim that it is uh, unirritable um, right so the first thing I'll say is that that's not ac that, that, that's one of the reasons that I've had trouble with uh, traditional Christianity is because of the uh, the changes that scribes have made in the text but it's not the only thing the another issue is the uh, internal discrepancies that you find within the New Testament and within the Bible and um, uh, I uh, I do know that the Quran has been faithfully uh, transmitted over the centuries and for some reason Christians decided not to transmit their book uh, as faithfully I uh, I'll tell you where I would agree uh, with, when it comes to the New Testament Gospels and the, the entire New Testament, we have many thousands of copies and they do have lots and lots of differences among them. Uh, hundreds of thousands of differences among our copies of the New Testament. But most, most of those differences are completely insignificant. Like they don't matter for anything. We're counting like misspelled words and things like that. So they don't, but some, some of them do matter. They affect, they affect how you might understand a passage or a book or the entire New Testament. And the Quran's just not like that, obviously. I mean, the Quran has been faithfully copied for many, many centuries. So I that, that part is absolutely right. Now you see, this is why Christian apologists and Islamophobes, they get upset, they get angry, because they see the same atheist, agnostic, fair, balanced guy is saying, the Bible is not preserved. You don't have any early, until the fourth century, uh, you don't have any even mostly complete manuscripts in the earlier you have just a scrap and so on and that's even not from the first century right so when they realize that and then that same Bart Ehrman is saying no the Quran has been preserved very faithfully I do know that the Quran has been faithfully uh, transmitted over the centuries and for some reason Christians decided not to transmit their book uh, as faithfully they realize that this cannot get out, so they make wild claims and challenge it. SubhanAllah, you see these people, they come out as haters. They're not calling towards Christianity. You look at them and their signs, their drawings mocking the Prophet Wasallam. You have nothing about calling towards God or Christianity, just attacking Islam. Look at this. They have a fake dead body sitting there just to grab attention, just to trick people into believing in their hate and the police came out in america we don't put up with these kinds of things they saw that these are people preaching hate they're trying to stir violence and they were made to move alhamdulillah their da'wah is not towards religion not towards god it is just to attack islam it is just to gain viewers based on islamophobia their challenges we will meet and we will show the world that these guys are nothing but fraud. Show us a Mus'haf from Mus'haf of Uthman and I'll give $5,000. So 
I decided to do some research. I read the works of a Dr. Salahuddin Munajjid. Salahuddin al-Munajjid, he recently passed away in Riyadh. He was a researcher on Islamic artifacts and history and especially the Quran. And another uh, well-known scholar, his name is Labib uh, Saeed. Labib Saeed. Uh, and Dr. Labib Saeed, he also wrote about a particular manuscript that's in Egypt. And that is the one that we have here with us today. Dr. Salahuddin uh, al-Munajjid and Dr. Labib al-Sa'id both agreed that according to their research, this was one of the musahif that was sent out by Uthman radiallahu anhu to the different Muslim lands. And this is their research. And we'll talk about different scholarly opinions about this as well. This is not my personal opinion. I'm giving you the research of well-known accredited Islamic scholars of the history of the Quran. Um, so I wanted to purchase one of these scans. Obviously, I cannot purchase the manuscript itself. These are not for sale. These are 1400 year old manuscripts in museums owned by governments and so on. But I wanted to get a scan of it first and foremost for my own benefit and also to show these Islamophobes that this is the Musaf as attributed to Uthman radiyanhu and how all of the different Qur'an can be recited from it. So they are not different Qur'an. There's only one Qur'an. Copies of that are sent out in the world and they're printed and so on. And recitations from that one standardization may differ in elongation, in mudud, meaning stretching the word or not. That doesn't mean it's a different Quran. For example, in English, uh, if I was to read uh, Shakespeare with an American accent, or, or if I was to read it with a British accent, or with a South African accent, uh, in the end, I'm reading the same book. It's not a different book. These are different ways of pronouncing. If I said people or peoples, well, People is used for uh, jama, meaning a plural in, in our English here. If we said, uh, you know, the people are coming, we just say people. But in some forms of English, they will say, these are my peoples. They were for uh, showing plural, they will use an S with it, right? Both are correct. Both are the same meaning, but those are different styles of recitation. This is the same that's true for the different Qur'at. But they all go back to one standardization that was done by Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. Before I get into that, though, I want to also benefit from a couple of other things. One, um, I have a very beneficial work, and this is Qiraat al-Ashar al-Mutawatira. This is the 10 well-known Qiraat, and it has been put together in a very beneficial manner, where they have a page of the Mus'haf here with it, and then they have the differences of the different citations here. So from one Qur'an, one standard Qur'an, you can look at the differences in recitation. One Qur'an, different styles of recitation. And I used that to benefit from this because I looked at the different styles and then I looked at the Mus'haf itself of uh, as attributed to Uthman radiyanhu, which again now is going to have no dots and no fatha, no kasra, no damma, no sukoon, no jazam, no pesh, no zair, no zabar, none of those things, no mudud, no madil lazim, no madilin, none of that, right? It's going to be written in its original rasam Uthmani, the Uthmanic script. And when I look at it, and here is a scan from Surah Nahal, and this is in the uh, 89th verse, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shaheedan alayhim. Shaheedan alayhim, this is the regular recitation. But if we look at some of the different Qur'at, like Hamza and Yaqub, they read it alayhum, shahidan alayhum. Now that's interesting because alayhim and alayhum sound different, but the meaning is exactly the same. There is no difference. Ala is still there, hum is still there, shahidan is still there, but they recite it a little bit differently. But now when you look at the original Rasam Uthmani, both can be recited from it, right? So this tells you that the difference of Qur'at are not different Qur'an, that different ways of recitation. And that's one thing I love about this scan, that I can go through it and I can look at the different recitations and how they were written in one of the earliest manuscripts that we have. Now, uh, having benefited from that, I want to talk about uh, some of the uh, Islamophobic accusations, because these guys, they love to lie, unfortunately. And when they get proven, when they say, oh, bring us a Mus'haf uh, attributed to Uthman, Mus'haf Uthman, and when you bring it to them, 
Then they're like, it's not a Quran. <laughs> I don't know what they mean by that. Um, and when they're caught like that, then they will try to say, oh, no, no. Uh, the researcher who put it together said this is not one of the early manuscripts and so on. Uh, and again, this is the, the pathetic thing is that this is one of the early Musahif, no doubt to that, right? And this is no doubt attributed to Uthman radiyanhu. That does not mean that we are saying that he wrote it with his own hand. It does not mean that this is one of the ones that he had uh, in his own position when he was attacked uh, and the one that his blood was. This, these are not things that we are saying. What are we saying is that the early manuscripts that the Quran was standardized upon in according to Rasam Uthmani, these are from them. Right? And this is what he says as well. And I'll explain a little bit about that. Right before we get there, I also want to give one more piece of information, which is uh, from the book Al-Itqan of Imam Al-Siyuti. Understand something, that the Qur'an was not revealed as a book that fell from the sky. Okay? The Qur'an was revealed with the recitation, Qur'at. Yani Jibreel, alayhi salatu salam, the angel Gabriel, he brought that message from Allah and he recited it to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam, peace and blessings be upon him, then recited that Qur'an to the companions. And it was revealed in one style, one harf, one mode. And then he asked Allah, as is mentioned in Mutawatir Ahadith, in numerous authentic narrations, Allah increased the styles of recitation to seven. And from those different styles of recitation, we have different Qur'at today. Now, Having said that, these were all memorized word by word, letter by letter, sound by sound by the Sahaba. And that's why even every Qur'at, every style of recitation has to be mutawatir, has to be through numerous chains, all the way back to the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Jibreel, to Allah. These are the words of Allah. And they have to be in accordance to Mus'haf Uthman. What does it mean Mus'haf Uthman? Once again, that means not one particular book, rather the standardization that was made and the copies of that that were made and that were sent out and the copies of those copies for all the different Muslim lands to all recite from. So then those Mus'haf, if they had one in Basra and if they wanted to recite the Quran, they would have to make sure it's in accordance with what Uthman Radiyan standardized. If they had it in Cairo, if they had it in Damascus, if they had it in Baghdad, if they had it in Medina, for example, Rayd ibn Thabit in Medina, he used to teach from it. And they would have to make sure. And that is the beautiful thing about Islam. The standardization, not just by the manuscript, but by the memorizers. In Al-Itqan, Imam al Sayyuti, he mentions that from those that memorized the Quran during the lifetime of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, word by word, letter by letter. Now again, this is a challenge to Christians. If they can show us one disciple of Jesus or one of the apostles that memorized the entire Bible word by word, letter by letter as it is today, they don't have it. They don't have it. In fact, it wasn't even compiled. It wasn't even written in that time. So, what do we have? We have Uthman ibn Affan. He's the first one that's mentioned. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ubay ibn Ka'ab, Zayd ibn Thabit, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abu Darda, Abu Musa al-Ashari. And then after these seven, he mentioned some other ones, meaning Abu Huraira, ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Sa'ib, uh, and others who memorized the Quran. In my research, and I've gone through many different books, and you can see my own notes here, I have found uh, more than 35 that I found with historic references, like for example, Maraf al Qur'an al Kibar or Al Tabrani or Al Bayhaqi in the books of Hadith that have mentioned who memorized the Quran from the Sahab. In fact, many scholars have said hundreds, if not thousands, had memorized the entire Quran word by word, letter by letter, front to end, during the lifetime of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. So now, that is something very powerful. It's very important to show that the Quran was memorized. Until today we have that, with that chain, that sanad, going back to the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Jibreel, to Allah. What does that mean? That means till today we have millions of people across the Muslim world that have memorized the Quran. At least hundreds of thousands that we can find. You go to Pakistan, you go to Indonesia, you go to Egypt, you will find so many that have memorized. In San Diego, we have people that have memorized the whole Quran. 
And not only have they memorized it, they can tell you who their teacher was that memorized the whole Quran and accredited them with the recitation and their teacher and their teacher and their teacher all the way back to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to Jibreel, to Allah. We challenge Christians to bring a Sanad like this for their Bible. Who has memorized the entire New Testament and who did they memorize it from and who did they memorize it back to Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him? They don't have it. Again, that's why they have that jealousy. <laughs> give me, give me, I give me, I give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. So here, this is an important message that the Quran was not just written in manuscripts, it was memorized. That was the first and most important method of preserving the Quran is the memories in the hearts of men that memorized it and women from the Sahaba that memorized it. Now, the standards that were written down, the Musahif, this manuscripts, these are in addition to support. These are not the main, but they're in addition and we have them. And we have many early manuscripts. Now, this particular manuscript, and as I mentioned, many of scholars like Dr. Salahuddin al Munajid uh, and others, that are, uh, Dr. Labib uh, Saeed, they believe that this was one, this is a scan of one of those original standard manuscripts. The scholar that uh, did this work of collecting this, Dr. Tayyar from Turkey, um, in the introduction, and this is not the whole book, it's just the introduction, he gave many beneficial points about this uh, particular scan. And I'm going to scan the pages and put them on the screen for your benefit. Um, the first thing that I want to point out from, from his introduction is that he said the Holy Quran was memorized by hundreds, even thousands of people, particularly in the early periods. Now this is very important. Those Islamophobes that want to use some of Dr. Tayyab's words to try to attack me and so on, they need to then be fair and say, okay, if you want to take him as an authority, look at what he's saying. Beautiful thing that hundreds, if not thousands of people had memorized the entire Quran in the early period. So we never have a doubt. If anybody makes a mistake, the one that have memorized can correct him. Manuscripts are there and an additional support. Alhamdulillah, we have those as well. But the main way is this memorization. And this period and the tradition of Fam Muhsin, yani the proper correct recitation according to the teacher teaching the next student with a chain and all of that was adopted and institutionalized and we have it today in Madaris and Islamic Institutes and Mahad al-Quran all over the Muslim world. Then uh, Dr. Tayyar, he writes that it, this is proven by the fact that the Caliph Khalifa Uthman, Uthman Rabianhu, did not just send Mus'haf. They didn't, he didn't just send manuscripts, many manuscripts. He says Mus'haf's here, any Musahif. It's not one book, there are many. Um, to the main centers for the, uh, for the ordinary functionaries, but an expert reader of the Quran, such as Abdullah ibn Sahib, and we mentioned about him that he was one of the ones that uh, memorized the Quran in the time of the Prophet والسلام, to Mecca, Mughira ibn Shihab to Dimashq. Abdul Rahman Ussalami uh, to Kufa, Amr ibn Abdul Qais to Basra, who were then appointed as teachers in these centers. So, what does it mean? These were people who had memorized the whole Quran, they had learned it from the Prophet والسلام, and his companions, and they went with these manuscripts to go teach from memory and to have the manuscript in front of them. Again, not one manuscript, but copies that were made by Uthman Radianhu. And then copies of those copies were made in accordance with the same rasam, the same style of writing and the same standardization. And these are all under the umbrella of the Musaif Uthman Radiallahu Anhu. Um, so they went uh, to these centers. He did not neglect Medina, but put Zayd ibn Thabit Radiallahu Anhu, the one who was in charge of the uh, compilation in charge of the same duty in the capital of the state. This was also the practice in effect during the reigns of the Khalifa, Caliph Abu Bakr and Umar. And even before Uthman radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr and Umar, they did the same. They sent people with a manuscript to teach. Now, in the time of Abu Bakr, 
radiallahu anhu. And this is his khilafah is only two and a half years. So this is right after the death of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu standardized one Quran so that we had it written down. Even though it was written during the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him. But in one standard book, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu did it. And from that, people were taught. Umar radiyan did the same. At the death of Umar, that manuscript was given to Hafsa, the wife of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and the daughter of Umar radiallahu anhu. Now, that manuscript was the base for Uthman radiyan to now make these standard copies with the input of Zayd ibn Thabit, one of the first ones that Abu Bakr radiyan also assigned to compile the Quran. And many of these manuscripts were made and the books of Hadith, and Dr. Tayyar mentioned that these were sent out. And he writes, since the time of the Prophet, experts who were charged with the duty of transmitting the divine message from one generation to another in every society contributed to the teaching of the Holy Quran as much as the Mus'haf of Uthman Radiyani. The standard manuscripts were there, but also these teachers who verbally, verbatim, from memory taught the students, and those students memorized verbally the entire Quran. This system from the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, because in his lifetime, hundreds, if not thousands, had memorized the Quran, till our time, this has been going on. So the printed Mus'haf, or the manu- handwritten manuscript, was an aid to that. <coughs> These were two essential elements. The Mus'hafs, the manuscripts, and the Faham Muhsin, the understanding of, of properly reciting, and supported each other and made it possible for the Quranic text to reach the present day without any distortions. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. When these people want to read the, 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 the works of Dr. Tayyar, tell them, read this. Read this. Dr. Tayyar goes through a lot of discussion on uh, the Rasam Uthmani and the manuscripts, and it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting piece. And he is a researcher. He has his own opinion. Other scholars have different opinions. Um, that's not uh, uh, evidence for us, but he does have many beneficial things. For example, on page 32, he says, as for the term Rasam Uthmani, uh, this is used to denote the spellings used in the Mus'hafs, which were copied in on the order of Uthman. Again, we're not saying this is the personal manuscript or he wrote it with... Upon his order, when we talk about the Mus'af Uthman, we're not talking about one book. We're talking about that standardization and all those standard copies that were ordered by Uthman Radiyan and sent out that are all the same. I need to have the same amount of chapters and verses, even though styles of writing may be a little different because different scribes wrote, but they all have beginning Al-Fatiha, ending with the Nas and 114 chapters. The, the text is the same, right? And all the different recitations will be in accordance to it. Now, when we look at this, he says that this is used to denote the spellings used in the Mus'haf, which were copied on the order of Uthman, the third caliph, which with the objective of setting an example in solving any disputes that may have occurred uh, in the spelling of the copies, which were sent to particular centers. Uh, the Mus'hafs, yani Mus'ahif, which were copied by a council formed by the Khalifa's order came to be known by this term. This is very important. Mus'haf Uthman is also not just the name of those Imam al-Musahif, yani those standard Musahif that were sent out, but all the manuscripts that were written in accordance to the Rasam Uthmani, in accordance to those rules, will be considered the Mus'haf of Uthman. And that's why we say they're attributed to Uthman radiyanu. We don't say this is his own personal Mus'haf. Now, on page 35, he says the number of Musahif, yani Mus'hafs, that were copied by the order of the Caliph Uthman is six. And there are also those who mention that they were sent to uh, the above mentioned centers, but do not mention the private copy of the Caliph, uh, claiming that the number was seven because he had one that was his own, which, as we know from historic records, that he was reciting when the people they came and attacked him and he died and his blood was spilt in it. And there are some museums that claim to have that particular copy, Allah knows best. Um, now, so this would mean that there are seven. However, there is neither any trace nor information about that particular one. But the six that are well known, uh, we'll talk about. On page number 37, and this is very important, he says, 
there are claims that these there are copies of the Mus'afs in the libraries, each belonging to the Caliph Uthman, or even the view that it was the copy that he was reading before he was martyred. These claims, as Dr. Tayyar says, and as I am saying, cannot be verified that this was the particular Mus'af that he had. Right? As far as we could establish, this assertion holds per true particularly for the following six Mus'af. So these following six are most likely to be those that will be from the Musahif that Uthman Radian sent. Number four is this particular one that he's mentioning. This is one of the Musahif attributed to Uthman Radian, Musaf Uthman, as is mentioned under number four by him. Now, he presents a lot of uh, information here and differences of opinion about uh, whether this manuscript is from the earliest one that Uthman Radian standardized and sent out or a copy of those early manuscripts, either which way it will be considered under the Rasam Uthmani, because this is in that same standard. Um, on page number 117, he says, according to the information and the view mentioned in the CD, which was prepared by Al-Maktaba Al-Markaziya, uh, and this Lil uh, Mahtutat, yani this is the manuscript Al-Islamiyya, the Central Library of Islamic Manuscript Works, and this is in Egypt. The, this Mus'haf, this particular scan that we have is one of the six Mus'haf which were copied upon the order of the Caliph Uthman. Now, again, uh, Dr. Tayyar himself believes that this is a, a later work that was copied off that manuscript still under the Rasam Uthmani. But he does mention, as in page 124 and 125, and I'm going to show you the scans, that the authorities of the government of Egypt presented this Mus'haf to the, to the researchers as one of the Musaif of the Caliph Uthman. And there were the likes of Labib al-Sa'id, and this is a scholar that I read from even before purchasing this, who held this view that this is one of the actual Musaif that were sent out by Uthman radiyanhu. And according to Qulusi, uh, Mahmoud Qulusi, uh, this is the statements that he made in the newspaper that were mentioned above. This Musaif dates from the first century, first half of the first century, uh, yani Hijri, 7th century Miladi, and it is one of the Musafs which were copied and sent to the various centers upon the order of Uthman radiyanhu. And he presents the views of those that feel that no, this particular manuscript is from the copies of that manuscript, and he has his own view as well. On page 126, he says, uh, then compared with the Musaf of Tashkent, London, Paris, Petersburg, numerous portfolios of which are missing today, this Musaf can be considered as a complete copy, this particular one that we have in our hands. Thus we see, this is very important for all you Christian apologists and Islamophobes, listen to what Dr. Tayyar wrote. Thus we see that the Holy Quran was protected not only by the reading of the Hufad, the memorize of the Quran, but indeed by its script. And it was preserved just as it was revealed 14 centuries ago. It was preserved just as it was revealed. These Musahif, these Musaf stand as indisputable evidences. This sacred system reached the present day with the same purity as it was revealed uh, to the Prophet ﷺ and has always been on the agenda of humanity with eternal oral and written witness. Thus, it is natural to envy the believers in this system and the endless pleasure they receive from it. Beautiful, 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 beautiful statement. This envy drives Islamophobes and those haters to try to discredit the Qur'an. But that same Dr. Tayyar that they are quoting says that these manuscripts are an evidence with the memorization of the Hufad that the Qur'an has been preserved meticulously without distortion from the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, till our time. Beautiful, great uh, resource. I enjoyed it. I hope you will enjoy it. Jazakumullahu khairan.